episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Coffee Cake Off. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined by Elizabeth and Beth, who will tell us about their recipes. So, Elizabeth, tell us about your coffee cake. Okay, well, every time we do a baking episode, I, of course, have to preface by saying I am not a baker, uh, <laughs> nor do I wish to be. So this was <laughs> a challenge for me, mainly because I don't have a mixer at all. I don't have a stand mixer. I don't have a handheld mixer. So many of the recipes that I was seeing that looked good really did require like creaming butter or like stuff like that. And so I was kind of, um, you know, I was searching for one that didn't say that. So this is kind of funny. I ended up finding this recipe in this small town, upstate New York newspaper. It's called the River Journal. And um, it's for no mixer Mother's Day coffee cake. So I was like, sounds great. We just had uh, Mother's Day recently. So this was all a good fit. And um, it's very, very simple. So it's, I think it's made for people like me. It's basically, it was like, you can use a round pan, you can use a square pan. There was really no, um, you know, no problem. Anyway, so cake batter is pretty standard. Um, half a stick of butter, a cup of sugar, a egg, a couple cups of flour, some baking powder, a little bit of salt. Um, I like this. This is also why I chose this. It calls for three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. And I do like that flavor that buttermilk gives. And then, um, a cup of fresh blueberries and so you uh, melt the butter mix it with the sugar and the egg add the dry ingredients and then add the milk it's supposed to be pretty stiff fold in the blueberries and it says you know don't over mix it should be just barely incorporated kind of you put it in the pan that you have either lined or greased and then there was the option to make a streusel topping, which I did. And this was just half a stick of butter, half a cup of sugar, um, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and half a cup of flour. And you kind of just like mix it all until it's crumbly and then spread it on top of the cake. Bake for an hour at 350. And that's it. So um, nothing really too crazy. Um, nothing... Um, what you wouldn't expect, but I did do it. And um, it was um, pretty good. good. I mean, I probably won't make it again because it's just not my like interest, but it, honestly, it was fine. And for someone like me, I really did like this recipe because it was so easy and um, doable and not confusing. And um, if I ever, for some reason, needed to like bring a breakfast cake or something light to an event, I would absolutely make this again because it was pretty much foolproof and it was good. You know, it wasn't, it was exactly the way you would expect. So that was my coffee cake and um, the River Journal. Thanks to the newspaper for, uh, for allowing me to find that via some Googling. So mm -hmm. Well, I did think that the blueberries were a little bit unexpected. I don't necessarily like to, to find that in a coffee cake. So I think that, that was pretty special. So that's cool. Um, and I think that that's great because, yeah, why not have that in your back pocket to pull out when you might need it? Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a good thing for like a little brunch uh, where you have to bring something. And it does sound super simple. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it was. So I'm actually really happy um, that I found this because sometimes you do need stuff like that, you know, and the streusel topping did make it very kind of coffee cake like. So yeah. that was cool. Um, all right, Beth, you said you have lots of detail. So I'm ready to hear what you made. I do, y'all. I was, well, I was really excited when this Klein family cookbook, Hungarian cookbook was uh, shared with me. My, that was my mother's, uh, my grandmother's birth name was Klein and uh so an uncle of mine put all these recipes together um that had been in the family and this is a coffee cake known as cooking 
K-U-C-H-E-N. And Elizabeth, you have some Hungarian in you. So, um, but yeah, it's cook, uh, chocolate cooking. And uh, it's the recipes attributed uh, to my aunt and aunt Elsie, but my grandmother made this all the time. And it really brought back memories for me. So it was super detailed. Um, it starts with, wait, it's a couple pages, but um, starts with the, and by the way, I did it by hand. I did not use my mixer because it said not to, but um, so it was three quarters of a pound of butter and some sugar, some dry yeast, some milk, flour, egg yolks, pinch of salt. I had to uh, activate the yeast and um, I, you know, I did the kneading with butter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then um, it did say to allow the dough to rise, it takes about four hours. Well, and then the pan should be full of the dough. Well, it wasn't. And I let it go overnight. I was really glad that I felt a little more confident nowadays about you know, that I could tell it just wasn't doing it and it was getting too late. And so let it go overnight. And that was the trick. Um, then you roll it out and it's, it's uh, on a lightly sprinkle, sprinkle board with flour. Um, what I thought was funny was roll out not too thin or too thick. So I wasn't sure about what that meant, but and then the directions also confused me, and I had to have Kurt explain it to me because it says directions for rolling out dough. Roll out, then fold from left to right, from bottom, from top, repeat three times. So yes, roll left, right, bottom, top, repeat three times. So I did that. And then the last time, it's the third time you fill it. And this is, um, you fill with and there's a note, adjust amounts of above to your taste. It calls for a half a cup of chocolate syrup, one or two squares of chocolate, uh, semi-sweet chocolate. I use like a about a half a cup of um, chocolate chips. Uh, then it also has uh, walnuts, brown sugar, and cocoa mixed together. Um, so I rolled it out, and I do have a picture of how it's rolled out. It's funny too, that it's a sprinkle, sprinkle the cocoa sugar on the dough. It was no sprinkling. It was full out dowsing of cocoa, which was amazing. And, um, and then you fill it and then you roll it into a tube shape and put it in a circle, put it in a bun, a buttered bunt pan, fill a little bit of spots with butter that's, I guess that's the end of it. But um, yeah, bake in a moderate oven, which is 350 for an hour. Oh yeah, also I had to cover it after you put the butter around it, let it uh, rise again. Um, and then you bake it for an hour, take it out of the oven and turn over when it's cool. And then I do have pictures of the sliced cake. And boy, I, as soon as, as soon as I, tasted it. It was it was flooded with memories and especially how the cocoa ends up kind of coming out and there's little burnt pieces of chocolate. It's so good. Um, so that is what I made. Um, I, I don't have a picture of the whole cake, but I just have the slices. And um, I really would love to make this for you and bring it into work because I think you guys would be super impressed. And I know I was, I was really proud of it. So yeah, that was my cake, my cooking. I am proud of you, Beth. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's a like, that's a long recipe with a lot of steps and it sounds fabulous. So good. And um, I would love to, to try it sometime. Cause that's, that's really cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah I, I, yeah. I was, I was bent on it. The fact that it brings back all those memories is like super special too. So that's awesome. And I also want to try it. So don't even think about bringing it to work and not letting me know beforehand. <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. This is an opportunity for us to have one of those uh, uh, potlucks at work. There you go. But, uh, anyway, Katie, what did you make for your coffee cake? Guy? 
Okay, so I am not a coffee cake person. I have rarely eaten coffee cake. I think like I think it's good, but it's just not something that I ever like really think of eating or making. So this was definitely a stretch for me. Um but what I did find this recipe online that I thought sounded really intriguing. It's it's called healthy Starbucks coffee cake. So it's supposed to be like the coffee cake that you can get at Starbucks, which is apparently very good. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just a little healthy spin on it and something that you can make at home. So I thought, well, I will give that a try. It, the recipe sounded really good to me. So um, you just line a baking pan with parchment paper. It's just a um, nine by nine pan. And then you make your crumble, which is coconut sugar, almond flour, ground cinnamon, sea salt, and avocado oil. I actually didn't use avocado oil for this because I didn't have any. I just used olive oil and it was fine. Um, and then, so that's your crumble and you just use your hands to clump all that together until it makes like a sand like texture. And you just set that aside. Then you make your cake, which is almond flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, eggs, maple syrup, vanilla extract, and you mix all of that together. And then finally, you you fold in um, some Greek yogurt, which uh, was, I always like seeing that in, in a recipe. It seems like it always makes it a little lighter, a little healthier. Maybe that's just me, but I thought that was probably the part that really um, brought me to this recipe. Uh, it also has a little bit of a tang to it, so I like the flavor too. So you pour half of your batter into your prepared pan, and then you sprinkle on a layer of your crumble, and then you pour the other half on, and then you sprinkle on a final layer of your crumble, so it's like half and half. Um, and then you just bake it for 35 to 45 minutes until you can pull a toothpick out cleanly. Um, and you let it cool before slicing. I have a picture of when I pulled it out of the pan, I thought it looked really cool. The crumble on top gets really nice and crispy brown. And then I thought it looked especially cool once you finally cut into it. Um, you can really see the line of crumble in the middle and mine because like, I guess maybe my cake wasn't cake batter wasn't like super even it kind of like was wavy a little bit which I thought was actually extra pretty so um I really thought that it was a nice looking cake and it tasted really good I think I maybe gave like two pieces of this to my husband and then just proceeded to eat the rest of it myself over the course of a week so yeah I really liked it this was good and in same uh, with you, Elizabeth, like, I'm really glad to have this because I've, I've never made a recipe like this before, but I feel like it could be versatile. You could make it ahead of time and you could bring it someplace and it just might check that box someday and I know right where to go. So that's kind of awesome. It sounds like it's gluten-free too, right? Oh yeah. 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 Cause you're using so almond awesome. flour. Yep. Yeah. That, so that's all, also a nice thing to, to, be able to put together very true yeah and i have not had this um starbucks coffee cake myself but this version sounds <laughs> sounds good so <laughs> yeah. yeah i have it either i bet it costs less too piece by piece i mean it's <laughs> yeah. not oh almost right. certainly yeah <laughs> Okay, well, we want to thank everybody for watching Recipe Share, and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about, and you can share your own in the comments. Join us next time when our category will be Easy on the Tummy. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share. Share a little recipe with recipe.